ladies and gentlemen. I am just prepping the stream per usual. We're almost there. We made some audio adjustments so my voice shouldn't sound as hot. So that basically means if you guys were used to cranking up the volume watching these streams, you should, uh, you should be able to lightly turn it back to your normal viewing sounds. And it should be a little bit cleaner. And uh, just a big shout out to all of you who gave us some nice audio feedback through the course of the last stream. If we inevitably use this video as a rerun, it's going to be, oh my gosh. But as of right now, this isn't technically a rerun. <laughs> oh, goodness gravy. But regardless, uh, welcome to everybody over on Steam checking out the game. We are going to get started here in just a moment. This will be a community stream where we answer community questions, highlight some stuff. It should be fun. Oh my gosh, transition please. Trans oh, there we go, much better. Much better transition, there's the game. Oh, perfect timing per usual. Ah, oh, I love it when a good plan comes together. I'm your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, and I just want to welcome you to the official Everspace 2 stream, where we're gonna highlight some details. I'm gonna show off some stuff that we've been working on. These, it, This is the latest and greatest development build, so it's hot off the press. Uh, the full team's been looking at it today, making sure we're ironing out the kinks, and we caught a number of them. It's just, it's just a part of the process. So we are bound and determined to hit a couple of little bugs along the way, but rest assured, it's, it just happens. It just happens, and that's fine, because we want to show you that bleeding edge development that we are in the thick of, okay? So thank you for being a part of this and having that understanding. And we're just gonna dive right in. That's what we're gonna do. So I need to go into our stream state save here specifically. And we also need to pick out a new ship. Um, I feel like this should be something we do at the start of every single one of our streams, just to, you know, mix things up a little bit. This is, um, I can't remember if we were using this in the last stream. I've been playing around with ship designs so much. And uh, frankly, so has the team. One of the things that we are gonna talk about today are tier two ships, in fact. So let's go ahead and um, go to a location where we can purchase ships and talk a little bit more about that. My goodness, look at all these individuals coming in. Welcome to the stream. It's seriously my pleasure, our pleasure at Rockfish Games to be able to host, to answer questions, just to hang out, honestly. Early access can, whew, it can be a process, right? Oh, so it's nice having you guys being able to hang out, 
and get the clarity of what the heck's going on. We want you to know what and why. It's integral to the process. So thank you for being here to help us be transparent with you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So we're heading over to Nephew's Plains. For anyone who's not familiar with Everspace 2 at all, let me give you the quick hookup. Basically, it's an open world RPG where you're playing as a spaceship, flying through a number of locations, getting that sweet loot as you do that sick shoot. That's right, it's a looter shoot. That came off so cheesy. Oh my gosh, can we undo that? Cut. It's a looter shooter in space, dang it, it's awesome. Of course, we enjoy it because we're making it, but I think that you would too if you give it a try. It is a very big departure from Everspace 1, as Everspace 1 was a roguelike. We are in early access, as I did mention prior, and we have about a year of development still in the process of getting things to work. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So, disclaimer. <laughs> You may see unfinished stuff. Disclaimer done, excellent. I have been told not to fly anything that you haven't seen before, but technically that doesn't mean I can't show you. So if I'm choosing a new ship and we happen to see something new, I'm free, right, Michael? <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna do it before he responds. Okay, we're gonna look over at the ship dealer. Oh. <laughs> and we're gonna check out some other ships. <laughs> oh gosh, okay, so we're gonna look at some tier two ships. Of course we get two gunships. Uh, here's a striker, here we go. Uh, so you can see the evolution of wings in this striker too. <laughs> I was hoping that like at least, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, so, so this is the main topic, okay? So we're developing more ship wings styles and also more stats for your ships. So for example, the Striker 2, you can see that the wing evolution is greater than the prior. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Striker and its wing evolution, uh, I mean, shoot, maybe I should just buy this puppy and show you. What else we got? Gosh, freaking dang it. Uh, and we also have an Interceptor Tier 2. <laughs> with um, some new wings as well to boot. And it's not just that, oh, you know, we felt like adding a little doohickey on the edges. There's a lot more to this that maybe some of you with a really keen eye can notice and others, maybe not so much. Elements like the, the bulky part of the wing in the front getting expanded upon, these elements back here getting a little bit more clarity, fleshed out detail. And this is a process through each of the tiers of ships that you will see where it just expands as you continue to develop your ship. In fact, in our uh, waiting screen, let me just let me just do this really quick. So if you look at this ship very quickly, this is a Sentinel tier four ship. So if any of you ever saw those wings and you're like, oh my gosh, it looks like there's so much more going on, yes. You are correct. There are a lot more things going on in these wings because this is the highest evolution of this wing type um, as we've designed it right now. This is not to say we have all the wings for all tier fours because that would be a complete straight up blatant lie. Just want to make sure you guys know that. But you can see uh, the level of detail in a ship like that versus probably what you've been flying around. It's, it's very different. There's a lot of differences, a lot of different highlights within the color spaces, the, the, the light sources, the, uh, the shape and size, like all of those things have evolved to where now we're getting more into the lighter additions with the tier two ships. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to that striker. I think I want to do that. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> I'm not flying it. Anyway, <clears throat> we're just gonna, all right, we're gonna go back to the striker here. This is really what I wanna show. So again, this is a tier two versus the interceptor tier one that we're currently flying. Um, another thing that we decided to do, and I'm sure a lot of you have been annoyed 
at the fact that you go back to your hangar and you have three is it three ships right now is it five ships i can't even freaking remember you got a number of ships that you're locked in you're like if you want to get rid of one you have to go back to your home base swap to that other ship go to a store then sell that ship to replace it with something else super annoying so we have a sell ship button and what I just did is I just sold my ship, like straight up, interceptor, gone, sold it. Um, just kidding. We, these are the three ships that I have right now that I can sell from my home base. <laughs> just trust me, we have more intuitive controls than that. That was a joke for anybody wondering. So now we're all on the selling ship sizings. It says sell ships from home base. These are the three ships that we have at the home base, okay? I have a gunship, a bomber, and a striker. I quite like the striker, but I just, I want to sell it because I'd rather get a new striker. Okay, so we're going to sell this. And it's just showing us that it's permanent when we do this. Here, let me get my stinking face out of the way. Selling ships is permanent. You won't be able to buy back ships that you sold. Any installed equipment and cargo present on the ship will be placed in your home base's storage. So it doesn't just insta-vanish. That stuff does get moved into your storage. Otherwise, that ship's gone. And look at all those sexy credits we just earned. Mm. All right, so now we can purchase ships. We're gonna get this striker. We're just gonna buy and sell uh, the current one. So we're also selling our interceptor. So we've effectively t sold two ships and we're getting the striker. Man, if we had just a little bit more money, we could send our interceptor to the home base. Eh, it's fine. But through this, you can see that a tier two ship is a lot more expensive than the prior ships. So you're gonna have to earn a lot of credits in order to upgrade and, uh, you know, do that style of things. Much is the norm in any video game space. So we're gonna go ahead and just sell ours and we'll have this nice striker too. I'm not even cheating to get this. This is in the live build, I'm not using my dev commands. We are now flying a striker two with these wings. And this is something that you're going to be able to do as well when we get to our July update, which as of right now is still on schedule. Is still on schedule. So I also want to repaint this. Um, I do like our blood star coloration. I think that comes across. Wow, that, look, that looks really good on that. Um, we could come up with something else. We normally have Steam, uh, or the, the excuse me, the chat uh, decide what colors we want. Um, Bloodstar looks good. You guys think it needs a splash of a different color? Love to see that sweet quality of life. Yeah, no, we're we love to see it too because there's there's things that annoy the heck out of us. We're like, oh my gosh, do we really have to fly all the way back to our home base? Like even using cheats, it's not fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, we're we're implementing those uh, quality of life improvements. Oh cool, Michael has an update for everybody who is wondering. Um, he kind of spilled the beans on YouTube. I'm gonna put the blame on him, not me. It's fun blaming my boss. What could go wrong? Anyway, the update is scheduled for the end of July, but we plan to drop it a bit sooner on the experimental branch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. For daring test pilots eager to get in the cockpit ASAP. So what does that mean? It means you would have to obviously own the game, which is a good time to do so because it's 20% off right now. Um, and whenever you dive into that, you're just gonna go to the public test realm thingy or whatever it's called and change your settings over to uh, the experimental branch. The experimental, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, we don't use the experimental branch often. It's mostly to work out the major kinks right before a big package update. So in the event of the July update, which is going to be pretty large, we'll need you guys to dive in and screw things up because that feedback is gonna help us make a smooth launch overall for that July package. So if you're down for that, if you like messing things up and you're okay and realize that that's not a representation of your overall experience, but rather the feedback that we need in order to make the overall experience better, do it. If you dive into that and you're like, man, this game's broken, I'm gonna leave a negative review, probably not for you, just, it's <laughs> just, Probably not 
<laughs> the territory you shouldn't be exploring. Okay. Excellent. Um, black, not metallic, please. Oh, all right. You know what? We'll make it black instead. We'll make it black. Um. Do we want to, uh, do you want to like, like highly reflective? That, I, ooh, ooh. I'm digging that. I like that. Oh, wait, no, we, we don't want to change over. Uh, oh, I already did. We, we changed over our uh, previ previous look. Hang on. Hang on a second. I don't want to change over it because I like the Bloodstar look. So we're going to move this back. I think it was like that. Is that right? We'll call that good. Uh, and we'll change this one to be more of that style. Just because we can. So you can see there's there's uh, 25 different colors in the current version of the game. Um, but there will be more. I'm just going to straight up confirm that. We're not done with the customization of the colors. Nor of the added details that you can do to the ship. I've already said too much. Uh, we'll talk more about customization of the ship in the future. <coughs> that is what I mean to say. Oh, goodness me. Look at look at me go today. I'm going to do this white-black combo. I don't know. It just uh, it speaks to me. And then maybe we could have some red lights. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a... Just a, just a little bit of color. Just a tad bit of color, yeah? Specific date on the experimental branch. Um... My guess would be the week before the last week. <laughs> oh my gosh, let me give you an actual date because that sounds super shady. Um, it would probably, this is me guessing, okay? Uh, Michael hasn't made an official statement on this, but I'm going to guess and say somewhere between the 20th and the 23rd. That's my guess. Complete complete hyper super guess, all right? And then we'll see what Michael says. He'll probably be like, Eric, no, that's completely wrong. Or Eric, shut up, we can't say anything yet. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. All right, so. Um, let's, last thing, let's go ahead and add a splash of red in a decal. Um, I kind of, I kind of want to do the Rockfish logo. I'm not trying to make this, like, self-satisfying. I just want it to go with the red, and I think it, I think it just, it works with the red really well. Should we outline it in white? Is that cheesy? That's a little, that's a little tacky. We'll do this to kind of give it a fade. And then for the text itself, we'll go with bonfire. On the wings all the way out there, oh my goodness. We're, we're actually gonna be adding new controls so that you can move around this space a little bit better. Cause these wings, they're hard to see where the rockfish is at, right? kind of hard to see but uh man i keep saying stuff about customization that's coming <laughs> there's gonna just be a lot more to make this more accessible that's that's the main point that i'm trying to go with all right there we go black and white with a little bit of red i actually i'm enjoying this a lot so we're gonna go with this one today thanks for the recommendation fins oh not metallic not metallic all right we will go with a more uh, plastic look with the black. That also looks pretty clean. I do like that. I do like that as well. Maybe a little bit more plastic. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll go with that. Cool. Custom two, launch. So again, this is a tier two. Don't even have to cheat to do it. 
for those of you who haven't seen me do any of the cheats, we'll go ahead and just do that right now so you can kind of see the difference of the wings. So this is the tier two. This is actually the tier one. So there's a quite, quite a bit of a difference here on these wings. It didn't look like it at first, did it? But when you're able to see those details, I mean, you go from one to two and it's like, oh, oh, that's a thing. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty larger, pretty larger. You get it. You know what I'm trying to say. So we are now flying this tier to look, even the missile changed locations. Look at that. Lots of little details at work here. And it's not entirely done either, so there might still be some working components of the ship that aren't firing on, on, on all cylinders. Um, for example, yeah, um, just looking at it, I don't see any of the lateral thrusters. So all of those are still in the process of being ironed out so that your ship looks as gorgeous as possible, but we'll get there. But uh, yeah, excellent. We'll do one more thing here. We'll take on a couple jobs. Then we'll fly around in Cedo for a little bit. We'll fly around in Union for a little bit. And then we'll obviously get to Zarkov because that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. I know it. It's fine. There's a, a number of other things to talk about too, so. Uh, please accept my detour on our way there. We'll do some repelling of attackers. We'll destroy some structures. Uh, we'll do some search and destroying. And uh, let's see. They need ramen. Oh, oh, that's too good to pass up. We're gonna take it, even though I don't think we're gonna get it done. Can you show us that this striker has two passes? I don't believe it does though. Oh, it does. It does in fact have two passes. Look at me being a liar. The two passives, 30% increased boost speed while under missile lock and can grab and throw drones. That's wonderful. So yes, um, this must have just been implemented because the last time we had the tier twos that was not in there. So yeah, you caught it. When you have a tier two ship, you're gonna gain additional passives. Um, there's a couple other bonuses that will be happening as you gain higher level ships as well, but it doesn't look like those have been implemented yet. Either that or we change things around. <laughs> but rest assured, there's more coming even than what I'm showing you here. Like again, this is like just implemented. We're just working out the kinks. So yeah, 30% increased boost speed while under a missile lock and can grab and throw bones. Bones? Drones. Excellent. Um, let's see. There was something I forgot to show you pertaining to the crafting system last time, and I want to get into that a little bit as well. So there was a lot of work done on revamping what this, uh, just the visual looks like so that you have the visual cues you need as a player to freaking understand what you're looking at here. And something that I neglected to show you is what specifically happens when you unlock these things to just give it a little bit more um, player conveyance. That's the super technical term, just so you know what's going on. So if we unlock this beam laser, it shows you that it's unlocking both of these blueprints or rather the opportunity to get both of these blueprints. And you can keep upgrading from here. So like, if you want to have the auto cannon as option, you know, if we're doing that, you very clearly see what's happening next, right? You see that these two blueprints will become unlocked and we would be able to create blasters and thermo guns um, through this line of blueprint unlockings spending our crafting data. If you're wondering about the crafting data itself, you can very easily view that here as well. I did show this off last time, but just kind of covering my bases so everybody can see just how much of a difference there is from the version that you're currently playing right now to what's going to be dropping here in, uh, holy cow, like, a, like not too many weeks. Goodness gravy, it's so close. We still have so much to do. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, guys. So, <clears throat> beautiful. So you can see. There's a lot that has been covered, a lot that's been uh, expanded upon. We're not just saying we're working on it. Like I'm showing you, we're doing it. You know, cool. How many tiers are there? Asked Gorthak. 
over on the Twitch chat. Um, the plan is to have four tiers of ships currently. Tier two is a chef's kiss. Mm, very nice. Do you have any plan to make long distance warp devices for fighters? Um, if you're talking about a fast traveling system, I see this question over on YouTube. Um, yes, we do have plans for uh, a fast travel system to get to where you want to go much faster. Um, if you're referring to just uh, a ship to just go stinking faster, there's a lot of modifiers for that. So. There's a, there's a lot of modifiers for that. Speaking of modifiers, you may catch a couple added ones. You may catch a couple added ones. We'll talk about those as they show up, if they show up. Um, but in the meantime, I think we're going to make sure that our ship is all hunky-dory, which it is. Took some jobs. Let's go do some stuff. Hasley, not sure how I feel about having to unlock certain items first before other items. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, it feels like a natural progression for us so that you can't just go into the crafting, go for the one item that you want and forever use it. Um, there is some semblance of a, this weapon is more advanced than another one. That was a lot of quotes. And that's why we're making that progression system. It does feel good for us internally. But uh, if, you, if you absolutely despise it, like it may, it shakes you to your core, you know what to do. Head on over to the Steam forums. Make a big old post and say, this is why you're wrong, Rockfish, and let us know. And we'll read it. We'll agree with you or not agree with you. If the community will chime in as well, we'll figure out what we need to do from there. So thank you for your feedback. <laughs> Get these outlaws off our backs. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Oh, I should have caught that mine so it wouldn't have hit them. That was silly of me. Nope. Ah, he's still bombing them. I think they'll survive. They're taking a little bit of damage, but it's okay. Excellent. Ooh, gas cannon. Beautiful. Approaching boundary, my goodness. All right, uh, let's see what this thing looks like. That's a, that's a pretty good gas cannon. That's a pretty good gas cannon. And I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing a lot of ships that are a higher level than our own as well. You're not supposed to collect enemy mines and bullets. I'm confused by the question. Um, I was catching the mines to prevent them from damaging the GMB. It was just a small little tactic I was doing. <laughs> Nothing crazy. Um, I think we're going to replace the flak for now. Let's try out this goss. I'm going to say something really annoying. I wish it wasn't blue. I wish I could make it red to match our little highlight. That would be really cool. Like this, like this feels good because it's it's matching. You know what I'm saying? Like how neat would it be if you could change that color? All right, let's keep going. Uh, 19 sas 98 says, did they raise the level cap or am I wrong? So in the current build, the level cap right now is 15. I will just straight up tell you that you've got a good keen eye on your heads because you've got good keen eyes on your head. Sometimes wording is hard. My point is, yes, you caught me. I'm actually going over level 15 right now. So I need to go over to Union and I can't trigger this mission. 
So I'm gonna cheat. So we're gonna fly, um, oh wait, no. Okay, so I, I'm, I just don't have to go to Avon Rest. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go to Union Bridge. We're gonna fly through there. We're gonna keep progressing. We can also do more jobs. We'll do one more job. We'll do one more job, and then we'll head on over to Union. We'll do one more job. Michael's, <laughs> Michael is having a heart attack right now. I'm so sorry, Michael. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, I'm just giving the people what they want. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a private message from Michael and uh, uh, what looks to be our financial officer. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> we'll take out this outlaw destroyer. Hanging out real close to GMB Turf. Oh man, why were we not going for the weak parts? We gotta go for the weak parts. Weak parts, weak points. All right, it's fine. Everything's fine here. Good. There we go. Let's get these guys too. Now we are, we still have the Bloodstar suite on our ship. I'll explain what that means in just one moment. Excellent. So what that means is as I'm using this decimator, I'm getting an active benefit if I'm also boosting at the same time. This is because we're using a Bloodstar raid set. Through this, we actually have four Bloodstar items. You're only required to get three to get the maximum bonus here uh, at this time. So the Decimator, when paired with the Catalyst, when paired with the Renegade Plating, when paired with the Raid Booster is giving us this really nice bonus. There are five Bloodstar items, by the way, uh, at least at this time. I'm gonna probably say that a lot, um, <laughs> But I digress. There is a second weapon that the Bloodstar have. It's probably my favorite weapon, and I wish I could get it to drop, but it is called the Repeater. And the Repeater um, is a scatter gun that fires really fast, hence the name. And it absolutely decimates your foes if you can get up in their grill. Notice the gate got its name changed to Mintaka Outer Rim. Yes, another keen observer out there. Good job, WT, on YouTube. Yeah, so um, it shouldn't come as a surprise as things get their names changed and descriptions get changed and stuff like that because it's work in progress, especially the text, especially, because I can easily change. And because we haven't localized yet, expect to see a number of them, okay? Expect to see a number of them. If you guys are coming in here and you're like, oh my gosh, Speaking of localization, I need German. You're a German team. What the heck, guys? Are you not even going to support your own freaking language? Like, calm down there. Whoa. At 1.0 release, we will have full German support. That includes all vocalized, all text-based, everything. It's going to be in there. No sweat. We've also seen a lot of individuals asking about Chinese localization. Again, don't worry. We're on it. We're going to have that at the 1.0 release. We just have to get all of the text and the content in the game before we go to localization. Otherwise it's gonna cost a lot of the money that you've been supporting us with. And I think that you would want us to use your money in an effective way to make a great product instead of foolishly. So 
thank you for your patience as we work through this to get everything localized in the most efficient manner to make the best products possible. Cool. All right. Uh, we don't have ramen, so we can't do this. Dang it. It's fine. We'll get some ramen later. We'll get some ramen later. Man, I've seen a lot of uh, viewers coming back for the stream once again. What a delight. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Is there any kind of time limit for the sectors like it was in implemented in Everspace 1? It was like 10 minutes before big boys show up. A great question from Cyberhive. Basically, no. Everspace 1 intentionally chose to use those mechanics like, like the game chose. We didn't choose the game chose. No, no, no. We chose to have that roguelike formula, right? Where you are on a super tight timer to get in, get what you need, and get out, and make it as far as you can before you die, and then restart that process. Without any incentive to move forward, meant you could literally grind a location out and get absolutely everything and have no care in the world. High-level play, you can actually still do that, but that aside, it's very intentional that we have you pushed for time through the process of Everspace 1. And Everspace 2, especially as you're seeing here, where we can jump where we want to go and do the things that we want to do. We can go backwards and forwards and sideways and slantways and whatever, uh, however we please, however we see fit. So there might be parts of the campaign where you're being tracked and there will be ships that zoom in to try and catch up at you. But for all intents and purposes, nah, you're good. Go where you want, do what you want to do. Uh, just keep in mind if you piss off the local Okar authorities, they will try to kill you back. So, you know, there's certainly that. But it's very much an open world style of exploration where you can go where you want, do what you want. So good question. One that I'm glad to iron out. Unfortunately, I can't quite show you this particular location yet. It makes me sad. We have to fail this mission. I caught a couple of details there that aren't ready to show. And those will get me in trouble. I caught it, Michael. I stopped. I stopped myself. <laughs> but we'll have more to talk about soon. <laughs> As we always do. Every week there's more to talk about. Let's jump on over to Union and listen to that sweet, sweet travel music that I know you all love. <laughs> Genuinely open world, excellent, says Ingleso, Inglesos on YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, that's we're, we're going for that open world feel, right? We could probably get into like some really crazy debate on what does open world mean? It's not something we really want to open up. At the end of the day, we're letting you go where you want. We're letting you kind of progress the systems the way that you want. You have the interactions with factions in a manner of how you want to have that transpire. Like they're all aspects of what open world looks like and how you engage with it. And we're pretty happy with the end results. So thank you. Thank you for that understanding. You need to unlock the jump gate of Cedo by story? Uh, no, that was just indicating that we needed to go through there to get to Avon Rest, which we are not doing because this will actually progress the story and it's stuff you can't see yet. But soon, soon, like a couple of weeks soon, in fact. All right, so now we need to, uh, we need to do some things. Let's see, that's, I think this is a new indicator, just kind of showing you this, uh, where there's like a circle on it. Do you see that? So a circle on there. What does that mean? Oh my gosh, more things to talk about soon 
we're gonna head over to Prescott Starbase. Then we will probably find a couple more places to go in Union, and then we'll head on over to Zarkov. You guys in chat are fun. I like you. Thank you for being here. Also this music. I really don't mind that there's like a Steam sale going on and there's like a thousand viewers over on Steam. Welcome everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm a huge dork. Would you expect anything less from a developer that you would want to know and trust? Think about it. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. Let's check out Prescott Starbase real quick. secure structure in front of us <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i forgot i still have the text to speech uh sound on um i hope you guys don't mind i'm gonna leave that on um it might there's gonna be things said Did but I expect anything hostile it's fine that should be fine not be ascertained whoever constructed this obnoxious futility might have installed weaponry along with it so what is it then it has the appearance of a vault. The complex opening mechanism, however, is beyond my decryption capability. Yes, thank you, Hive. Maybe I can crack it myself. Yes, wonderful. What force could possibly work where intellect cannot. <sighs> Goodness gravy. So obviously you're seeing more exchanges of content that's up and coming. Um, letting it play out a little bit for you so you can get kind of that samplage. We're coming up with a lot more side missions and quest lines for you to experience the game in more unique ways. You will also bring back a lot of those that you know and love that we've already accomplished through the course of Everspace 2. We've seen your distaste in certain missions and also your pleasant surprise of certain missions. And we are taking that to heart as well as we move forward. So yeah, it's good stuff. I really wanted to park here and look through more ship options. So we'll see what we have. Maybe we're not gonna park here for a very specific reason. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Well, this was a waste of time coming over here for. <laughs> but Eric, why don't you stop? We wanna look through the ships because I wanna keep my job. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> Goodness gravy. It, it happens in these streams where it's like we got so much new content. Oh my gosh. But hey, we at least get to enjoy the music again. Let's go um, Noah Damaris. That'll be a much better place to go to. Seems like a lot of new places. Um, Is there? I mean, there is a healthy number, and we have been working on more. Um, now, I will also say that I am uh, full transparency here. Full transparency. I am actually using a cheat that reveals locations that are broken. Like, they were removed from the game, but you can actually see them on the map right now. Um, some of these are being worked on. Some of them will be removed. So you might see an inflation of locations at these sites that simply will not exist, all right? That's, I just want to be overly transparent with that. Uh, you might see some that will eventually show up. I'm mostly doing that so we can explore Zarkov here. Because without the mission chain, I can't actually get to Zarkov unless I'm revealing this and able to cheat into it, which is what we'll be doing very soon. So thank you for your understanding of that. 
but there will be a lot more locations added. I mean, there's, it's a slow process, but uh, I mean, an entire new system's coming in less than a month. Like, shoot. And I think there's a new ship. <laughs> yeah, that Vanguard RNG, goodness gravy. Oh, the ramen, you're right. Oh, I should have got the ramen. The game really wants me to get, oh my gosh. Yeah. Geometry Prime, I feel like, I feel like it's been a while since you were able to make a stream. It's good to have you, bud. No big deal, just casually identifying certain members of the community who have been in basically every single stream that we've ever done. Uh, <laughs> it's like having the reveal full map option on in Discovery. Yeah, it's kind of like that, Spoot Knight. That's actually, that's a surprisingly accurate. <laughs> that's good, okay. Um, I'm not going to click ship dealer. Uh, I wanted to look at jobs again because I know that there were a couple additions. I think that destroy structures is actually a new one, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, we've been tweaking and modifying the jobs and some of them still kind of suck. Uh, just making them better, more interesting, and just adding more variety in general. So that's been going on. Uh, let's see what's in the shop. Do we have the Annihilator Riders already? Yeah, we do. Okay. Good, good, good. And we also have a signal Cedo, a Cedo signal decoder, which I think we'll go ahead and do that. And then after we're done with that, we're heading straight on over to Zarkov. That's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and sell all of these. All right, we're just going to, we're going to liquidate our assets. Just going to liquidate our assets. Yep. Nope. Not going to think about it. Just going to empty it out. Get a little bit more credits for our inventory and then head on out um just take a casual stroll around this station though there are a lot of larger stations uh in everspace 2. this one in particular like th this is this is not small <laughs> this is not small and you can see there's even secrets nearby there's a terminal over here if we really wanted to poke in and try and find some things going on. Look, we've got a destructible wall right there. There's a force shield here. There's a doorway in there. I mean, this in this base, like, let's just zoom out really quickly. Look at my tiny little ship. Just, it's a, just a gnat and compared to this massive, massive structure. And we've got entry points in from the side where Things have been ripped apart. Look, you can see that section is floated over here, so you can go explore it. All the debris leading over to it. Believe it or not, our lead creative director, I should just call him the creative director, Uva, he actually has an, uh, an architecture background. So one of his core mentalities in like making sure everything fits together is that if we're making something destroyed and broken like this, it had to have made sense before it was destroyed. Like we're not just adding debris because we can, that you can just explore wildly. Like if you were to take this piece of debris and then move it into this part of the base, it would fit into place and make sense pertaining to the interior space to connect it all. Same thing with the part of this that's been blown off the top. Same thing with this entire side that's been ripped asunder. Like all the components that would need to be there to have held it together are now floating as debris. Just, just kind of a cool little thing. It's pretty neat on how we have gone about the creative process. We're not just making stuff because it looks cool. Well, I mean, we're also doing that, but like we want it to make sense. We want it to make sense. And an over-the-top sci-fi spaceship shooter. All right, perfect. <laughs> Nailed it. And there's many little details around here, guys. Many, many, many little details. 
There's a lot to explore, a lot of poke about in, and a lot to unlock, too. In fact, I have not gotten any of the Eterna bypasses in this area, and I think there's three of them? Question mark? What's an Eterna bypass, you ask? Well, it's the items you need in order to craft augmentation modules, which can better your attributes so that you can put a lot of emphasis on a particular build for your ship. That works in conjunction with all the equipment that you've been finding. Just to better your overall experience. In short, it rewards for, uh, you through your exploration. Because each one of these locations, like that entire station, handcrafted. It's not randomly generated. Each one of these sites that we've been venturing to, they are intentionally crafted for your enjoyment. None of this stuff is randomized. We do have random locations that can generate and you can explore. But these main locations, they've been fleshed out with a lot of thought. In fact, uh, this last week in covering Zarkov, which we're gonna go into right the heck now, it's time, it's time to go into Zarkov. A lot of what we were doing with Zarkov, we were fleshing out those elements, you know, because we're handcrafting. It's like one of the things we decided, oh my gosh, the, the gas is actually in the way for this particular event to happen. So it's like, well, do we move the gas? Do we move the structures? How do we align this? Moving moving like the, the, the gas, like the, the clouds, like that stuff we place. <laughs> and we think about how it looks when you're starting a mission. Like if you, for example, let's just say that there's like enemies that are supposed to be in front of you or whatever, and you warp in to a cloud, and then it's like you get on the radio, oh my gosh, we're under attack, look at all of them, and you're like, oh my gosh, I see them all, but you can't actually see them all? That would be immersion breaking, it wouldn't be very pleasing. Those are the types of things we think about as we're crafting these levels, how you're entering that space, and how it's all interacting with one another. It's crazy, but it's all, it's, it's all handcrafted, it's intentionally placed, for that fluidity to go. All right, stop rambling. Let's get to a site and let's show it off. Where do we want to go first? How about a place we've never been to? How about a place we've never been to? Hang on, hang on a second, hang on a second. Much better. Okay, enough of that. I need I need my controls. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're taking out these guys. This has just been a little light teaser of this very beautiful space. Why are we not shooting the outlaw armor drone? Oh my goodness. Much better. Much better. All right. So this has just been a very little sneak peek of this environment. But you can see it's 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 large. It is large. Come here, item. Come on. Don't shy away from me. Thank you. Very large site. And frankly speaking, 
we're happy with the results. Now, there's a lot more to this area than what this little flyby even truly expresses. Um, let me see if I can tease you with just one little thing. Just one. And then, Michael, don't worry. We'll, we'll be out. <laughs> I just know Michael's sweating. He's like, Eric, don't do it. Don't do it, Eric. I'm not going to do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do one thing, okay? Because, like, there's got to be also this music. Music's new. There's one little thing I just want to show you. And just... Oop! Oh! Oh! Excellent. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, there's a there's an intake? Oh, okay. All right, well... Well, that's enough. We better get out of here. All right, let's go somewhere else. <clears throat> that's enough. That's enough. Let's see. Let's see. Where can we go from here? Let's go back to this crash site. There's a lot to talk about in this, just from an aesthetic standpoint. So what you're seeing, the, the main reason why I wanted to tease that, guys, the main reason is showing you that you know, we're working on these new mechanics that are going to be enticing for you to experiment with, all right? Now, in this particular location, you've already seen it. I want to show it again. There's a reason I came here next. These lightning rods, right? You know exactly what these do. You get too close, and they're going to throw you for a ride, and you're going to take a lot of damage as you bounce around. And then we also have more or less some wind components that you'll have to be dealing with in the future. And that's all the more that I can say on that for right now. But it's not gonna just be a simple matter of you being a really good pilot and turning left and right. Like you're gonna have to take into account other effects going on in this game in order to navigate and capitalize on your situations at hand. And that's largely how, that, that truly, that's largely how Zarkov is being handled. We want this to be a place that can be dangerous for explorers, but also really rewarding as well. But you have to know how to handle your ship and turn around situations that can go south really quickly. These vertical asteroids are unique to Zarkov. You may have seen something similar in Everspace 1 because technically in those randomized runs from a lore standpoint, you've been through Zarkov before. What? 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 That's right. Everspace 1? I don't know if you realize this, but Everspace 1 takes place in the DMZ. Do you know where we're at here? We are inside the DMZ. <laughs> so some of these sites that you're seeing that's been hard-coded and handcrafted in Everspace 2, we're kind of revisiting to a degree some sites that we've already been to. Just chew on that for a second. Chew on that. Oh my gosh, mission in action. <laughs> Excellent. I am really testing my luck with Michael today. All right, I promise I'm gonna calm down, okay? I'm gonna scale things back a little bit. Obviously, we're just really excited to show you this stuff. Like, that's really what it comes down to. Like, there's so much. I hope that you can see that there is so much that we're working on. There are so many added components and bringing this all together for you, it's it's kind of nuts. And like, we, we truly get excited about this stuff. Like we're happy with how things are coming across. We're happy about the feedback you've been providing us. It just feels right. It feels good, you know? And just a big shout out for those of you who do take the time to go to our Steam forums or the GOG forums and just like drop some, some savagery on there. Like drop some love on there. Like that stuff helps us out so much. You know, it, it sucks to say, but sometimes you don't even know what you're doing wrong until somebody points it out, right? So like, we really appreciate you guys like coming out and just being like, bro, fix this. And it helps, helps so much. 
We're just like your praise of saying, hey, I really loved this particular event. I want more events like it. Done. Like that, it helps. You guys have been great in our progress through this. And Zarkov is shaping up to have an, it, like the impact that it's making. I hope that you can already see it's reflective of that feedback you guys have been providing. So you're releasing this on GOG. It's actually currently available on GOG. So the state of the game is not what you see that I'm playing right now. I'm giving you a tease, a little bit of a walkthrough of Zarkov and what's gonna be happening in the upcoming update. Um, but this update will be hitting both Steam and GOG. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be both of those at the same time, if not relatively close, like maybe a couple hours different Sometimes there's things that happen in the back end. But uh, all of this Zarkov the Vortex update drops at the end of July. Absolutely. Now I want to explore a little bit more in here. But I think if I do... Uh, I can't I can't quite go too much more into this space. But uh, you can see like the main event here is that crashed... Um, colonial warship in fact everspace one veterans will recognize that ship immediately and be like damn that's kind of the effect that we were going for and there's a lightning storm going on that's that was close <clears throat> and these clouds are very much fly inable and you could ram right in, into an asteroid wow that was close did I say fly in a bowl? It works. You guys know what I'm talking about. Can I role play as a pizza delivery guy in this game? So the reason why I'm actually reading that and answering this with all sincerity, we have seen an influx of people who would like a job to where they're picking up goods and delivering it to somebody else. Uh, more or less like an Uber driver, uh, Uber Eats, right? Is that what it's called? Uber Eats? Is that right? Like there could actually be enjoyment from that in this game. So can you role play as a pizza delivery guy? Don't think we're gonna have pizza, but ramen? <laughs> we might have some outlets for you uh, in time. Uh, it's still, and I should also say that this is kind of, it's still sort of like floating around, but we think it'd be fun, at least very least funny, but just wanna have that. You know, like we wanna, we wanna make this, It's it's not like we're trying to go like, into this super deep space simulation because that's not what this is and if you are watching the stream right now and you're wondering well where are the simulation aspects of the game i mean you're going to see some of that visually and maybe some mechanics here and there but that is not what we're even describing the game as like if somebody were to say is hey how's that space sim ever space 2 we would say well it's not a space sim it's actually a looter shooter in an open world rpg environment that's how we're defining our game so so I want to clarify that to all the people who are watching. We're not making a space sim here. And if you're looking for a space sim, I think that your expectation moving in is already going to lead to some aspect of disappointment because this play is not so much like one. Aspects of it do, again, but not the full-blown thing. So just want to throw that out there. The last thing I would hate to see is for you guys to buy the game with the wrong expectation and then be like thoroughly disappointed that it's not a thing that we never claimed it would be, right? That's why I'm making that disclaimer. So thank you for being present in the stream, listening to me talk about these things. We want you to be on the same level with us so that you know where our vision is and how we are moving forward. Cool. Cool. Um, Michael, I am gonna ask you this question because I know that I talked to you about it prior to the stream. Um, I didn't really feel like we should go into Super Light and Zarkov yet because I don't think it's ready. Um, do you want me to hold off from that or do we want to give a sample of it? Because it could be misleading, right? So I'm straight up asking Michael. He's going to give the cue, say yay or nay. Otherwise, let's see if there's some questions out there that need answering. 
Um, and also just a, a very pleasant shout out to um, Shuzan, who's been answering questions. I know that hazzy has been out there helping people out. There's a number of community persons. You guys are freaking rock stars and helping guide questions that I've missed because I'm focused on all of this stuff. Um, but thank you so much for answering the questions that I do miss. This very much is a live stream right now, and I want to make sure that you're taken care of. So what about the level cap in July update 20 or we'll give more information about the level cap whenever it's ready. <laughs> Michael says, yeah, as if me saying nay would hold you back. Bring it on. Okay. All right. So um, with that being said, I will provide a very distinct disclaimer here, guys. So I'm going to go into super light into Zarkov and we have added music. giho has been hard at work and he's been creating some really good stuff. This music that I'm about to show you is not approved. In fact, we would very much like to change it, okay? So if you immediately start hearing it and you're like, oh man, it's awesome, oh man, it's terrible, that's great, but it doesn't matter. So I hope that you enjoy this random extra track from Giho. Should be fun to listen to. And we'll fly around the vortex. Shout out to Giho who does like all things sound related to Everspace 2. Like not only does he do the music, he does all the weapon sound design, all like the little UI sounds and, and ticks and triggers and all that type of stuff. He does it all. It's pretty wild. Oh gosh, the part. I love that part. Let's go and do it again. Ready? Wait, right here, right here. This is the moment. Maybe I poorly timed it. Anyway, you get it. But again, this will very likely change. Very, very likely change. But you can see, we he's got a nice assortment of skills and can create a diverse assortment of sounds for your wonderful ear holes. And we're pumped to uh, see what's next around the corner. Yeah, so I see some of you guys commenting about how like it doesn't really fit the darker vibe Zarkov is supposed to have. And actually that's exactly our mindset internally. Um, we still like the music. We just don't think it quite fits. So we love Giho and, and what he puts together. We really do. It's pretty great. All right, let's fly in this space. Uh, for a little bit. Hello there. My goodness. Now, there, there is a part of this area that I have to avoid. Uh, I can't remember where it's at, so if we come across it, close your eyes. And then I'm not in trouble. That's how that works. But I want to decimate this drone carrier. And we're just going to get in close combat because we get a major bonus in the striker for having multiple enemies nearby us in close proximity. In fact, we destroyed all those drones because of splash damage. 
I mean, we, we made quick work of that. This is effectively a brawler ship. And uh, I I love that type of equipment. So, real pleased with how that worked out. If you flew a different ship, like if you flew a gunship, you could probably also tear that thing to shreds just in a different capacity. I just, I really enjoy the striker getting up close and personal. It's just kind of my thing, you know? Everyone's got their thing, and we have all types of different play styles. that we want to honor. Did we find... Did I see... No. Okay. We've been finding a good number of items, but uh, not what I thought we found. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, the recharge delay and shutdown duration are longer, but... Otherwise, that's a, that's a pretty healthy bonus. I think we gotta take that. I think we gotta take that. So there we go. Uh, where am I at? Oh, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta be careful I don't go the wrong direction here. <laughs> Stay up. Up on top of the clouds. Okay, very good. <clears throat> but clearly you can tell, like, we're quite pleased with the aesthetic and how it's coming across in Zarkov. And there's going to be more of this, too, of course. Beautiful. Woo! All right, quick pause on this asteroid. We're just going to, like, float over it and just chill for a second. Cool. And let's see what people are asking about. Um, I see Chiron8472 over on Twitch asking, but seriously, are you planning on releasing an OST of the game music? This is what we did uh, with Everspace 1, and I can just straight up con confirm to you that we absolutely plan on doing this with Everspace 2 as well. Um, Everspace 1 also had bonus tracks that were not in the game. Um, and yeah, so like you can, you can, like if you go back to the Everspace 1 soundtrack, in comparison to Everspace One, you'll see that there's a number of things that are included in there that weren't there. Um, that sounded funky. Um, there's also a couple tracks that were in the game that I think aren't in the OST um, because uh, like at the time the OST launched versus the development of the game. So like, there's li like there was more game that came after the OST. So with Everspace Two, we are looking to make sure that the OST is a complete representation of the game and everything that it offers. So yeah. Um, oh, Michael Michael even made a specific response. He says the Everspace 2 OSD is even a reward from our Kickstarter. So yeah, um, we'll have it as a deluxe upgrade uh, probably together with... My goodness, probably as a uh, together with Everspace 2 art book just like we did for Everspace 1. So there you go. There's the official from the CEO's mouth. Striker still your favorite class, man. I'm I've been enjoying the striker more and more and more, and then the Vanguard came along. All right, we're gonna keep uh, keep this up. If he's ever DJing anywhere live, I'd love to drop in. Oh my gosh. Well, I know that we're gonna have. Well, I guess the release party is exclusive uh, in Hamburg, Germany. But man. We should, Michael, can we get Giho to like DJ the release party? It, <laughs> pretty sure he's not gonna want that. He'll, he's gonna wanna chill. He'll be like, nope, I'm done. I made all the stuff. <laughs> I wanna just sit down and have a beer. And frankly, I, I wouldn't blame him. Excellent. You're so excited to fly a Vanguard. Oh. Uh. <laughs> just insert the Eric Gasm right now emoji, cause I am just so excited to tell you more about the Vanguard. It's getting close, guys. It's getting so close. I wish I could fly it. I really do. It's just not quite ready. Whew. 
man. <laughs> oh, there we go. I found what we're not supposed to show. Good, excellent. All right. You can also tell um, a reason that I'm showing this location is because it's far more of an aesthetic appearance as opposed to has a lot going on or so it looks like it. Um, and that's done intentionally. I'm trying not to reveal the contents of these Zarkov locations so much. That's why we've been particular about what we're revealing over time. Um, it's just part of the process, guys. You know, you know the drill. We have to develop stuff in in order to there to like show it off. And if, if it's halfway done, we don't want to reveal that because you don't want to look at blockouts and be like, wow, that's lame. So. Oh, 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 what's that? It's not to show. Let's listen to this probably bonus track a little bit more and we'll go to another location here in Zarkov. I can't show this location, unfortunately. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a little too revealing right now. Oh, we'll go back over here. I like this one. Let's go over here. I did see a question um, over on YouTube. Is is it back away? It looks like it got an official response, but I also wanted to clarify this since we do have a good number of people watching over on Steam. So the entire design philosophy of Everspace 2, that, that word came out weird. I recognize that, philosophy. <clears throat> the entire design direction is a single fighter, okay? You're playing as a one-man fighter throughout the game. That is our core design, a pillar, the foundation, and everything is built on top of that, right? So if you're curious, if you're gonna be commanding some super massive dreadnought space destroyer thing, uh, just wanna like nip that in the bud right now, no. That's not what we're going for. Uh, it's never been anything that we've ever stated. Um, it's, it's like a, a traditional, you know, shooter where you're playing as your character or then you're fighting other enemies similar, uh, bigger, badder bosses. You know, you got your super bosses and then maybe you have like these incredibly massively sized bosses to boot um, and everything mixed in, in between, right? So you're always playing as that one man fighter. The size of your ship uh, is gonna vary a little bit, right? You can have smaller ships and you can have larger ships, but they're all still one-man fighters. You're not getting anything crazier than like the size of a Millennium Falcon, for example. I haven't even heard this one yet. When was this added? Mm. Giho. Man after my heart. <laughs> Ooh. Ow. Get out of here. Yeah, I, I really dig this music right now. <laughs> Whoop. Speak of the devil. Let's give him some corrosion missiles to deal with. Oh! Oh, an anti-missile drone? Oh, cruelty. See you later. down these defensive turrets so they can stop shooting at me. Or my aim is just bad and we'll just shoot the ship. <laughs> Ooh. 
I'm trying to move. Oh yeah, we can also throw drones. We'll, we'll pass his drones back at him. Take that. Forgot we had that passive. It's a nice, fun little passive. All right, open up. Open up. Arr, get wrecked. Beautiful. We are gonna maximize our inventory space here in just a moment. I just know it. We picked up a lot of goods. Give me those credits. That's right. Adam knows what's up. All right. Goodness. Yeah, he must have just added this track. Like literally just added this track because this is the first time I'm hearing it too. Somebody out there's like, oh my gosh, look at this rockfish employee just like splurging over his own game. Goodness great, give me a break. What a sellout. I'm just really proud of our team and what we've accomplished, that's all. I think that we're pretty freaking awesome. And I hope that someday you join a team that you also think is pretty freaking awesome. Let's keep playing. Woo! Take out this proto scout. Mm. Rocket launcher. We're still not full. How much more space do we have? Oh my gosh, we still, we got five more slots. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I think that I forgot to talk about one other aspect of a higher tier ship and that is the cargo is a little bit larger. So as you're getting greater ships, your inventory management, you have to deal with is less and less. Isn't that convenient? Isn't that nice? Isn't that just pleasant? So, um, so yeah, if any of you have noticed, the Scout does have less cargo than, say, a gunship. We're doing this for a number of reasons. One is to help balance the ships themselves, with all sincerity. Um, also, it does make sense because a Scout is smaller than a gunship, uh, therefore it shouldn't have as much space. But, <clears throat> but again, as you're leveling up or as you're obtaining higher tier ships, you will have to worry about those aspects less and less and less so you can focus more on optimizing everything that you're doing. It's just part of the progression, as I'm sure you're all familiar with as video gamers. Mm. Would be cool though if we could fly frigates or slightly bigger ships, maybe as an expansion or separate game. I mean, that sounds like a separate game. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be straight up honest. Would it be cool? Well, yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, maybe not with this level design. It's like you get a big ship and like you have to fly on the outside of this asteroid. You couldn't go inside because it's too big. Like it, it's basically like one of the things to really consider about larger ships, like I get the desire to have them because I want to fly big ships too. Like, don't get me wrong just not in this game because what you're effectively asking us to redesign all of these handcrafted locations with a large ship that the player's controlling in mind right like that that's a big ask that is a very big ask it's not something where it's like oh yeah let's just make a big ship into the game like i just want to straight up make sure you guys are aware of that it's not that simple it's not that simple. We'd add a big ship and then it wouldn't fit or work right in the game. And then everyone would be complaining like, why did the, the fighters work better than the larger ships? It, it'd just be a constant, constant never ending battle, right? So yeah, a different game could definitely rock it for sure, for sure. But our game's all about dat fighter. Whoop! I almost bumped into you. Sorry about that. What's GMB doing out here? We haven't seen hardly any GMB out here. That doesn't make any sense from a lore standpoint that we've talked about yet. making sure everything's good this isn't an inventory management sim nope sorry uh no no but if you're looking for that you're gonna have to look elsewhere <laughs> goodness you guys uh 
Um, so question from Glut Wire Teapot coming over from Eve Online. Woo! Welcome, sir. Um, is it possible to gear up small ships in this game to fight big content? Yes, that's actually entirely the point. Yeah, you're gonna be a little ship decking yourself out to fight all those big baddies. Oh yeah. Is your striker supposed to have a third device slot based on the stat screen? Um, maybe. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Kazar. <laughs> I was hoping nobody would notice it. You guys and your eyesight, you're just like scanning everything for any inconsistencies. I, I don't even know why I'm trying to stop you. Oh my gosh, yes, you are correct. Uh, it should technically have three device slots. <clears throat> but we'll talk more about that later. Can current cargo be sorted by rarity? Oh yeah, absolutely. We can sort it by uh, item type, rarity. We can talk about the value as well. Change it all. Or you could just have it by latest. So it's like, this is the most current thing we've picked up and that's the oldest thing. Yeah, there's a number of different ways. But yes, with rarity, it's clearly tiered. So it goes from superior to rare to uncommon to commons. Yep, all that's in the game. And this does work both from a mouse and keyboard standpoint and also controller. Um, if we wanted to do the, let's see, is the sorting? Yeah, it's pushing in the left, whoops. It's pushing in the left. That's nothing, there wasn't anything new to show you. If anybody's like, oh, screenshot that. No, this, this, you've seen this before. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you push the, the left stick in on a controller, it changes the sorting. But I'm a mouse and keyboard player myself. Uh, in fact, the game is truly designed for mouse and keyboard play, uh, but we're also trying to optimize it as much as possible for controller support, as well as have that opportunity with Hotas and Hosas since we know you guys also enjoy your games like that. And that's great, that's fine. That's perfect. How about a micro fighter? Like an itty bitty tiny thing, barely larger than a tight pilot's cockpit. So kind of like you're flying around a drone. I mean, that's an interesting concept, but that's not what we're doing. Let's see, making sure all the other questions are answered. I got one more that I think needs to be answered and then we'll dive right back in here. Um, actually two more. Is Striker one of the new ship types that's coming? No, it is not. This is one that has been available, but the tier two Striker as, as well as the tier two variants of all the previously released ships will be making their way uh, into the update soon. The new ship I am not allowed to fly yet because it's not ready. That's. I say it like I'm not allowed. It's it's just not ready, guys. <laughs> That's honestly the case. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get there. Are we seeing the game made in real time with each update, or are there things like another system being made over time for the big 1.0 release? Uh, data cluster. Actually, I, I really enjoy this question. So, um, let's break it down. We're, I mean, we're a relatively small team. You know, we're indies. We're veterans in the gaming industry, uh, but there's about 20 of us and we have to prioritize each aspect of updates as we're moving forward. So a lot of what you're seeing is made in real time, but I will also very clearly state that there are certain aspects that we have accomplished when we were working on CETO that are applicable to something like the Kait Nebula. And there's stuff that we've done in Union that will be applicable to Athon. And there are items that we've developed that will be synergizing with stuff that comes out of Kion. And all of these are temporary names as well. They could change on the fly so that you're aware. But like, there are aspects like worth, when we design, we think about like the big picture, right? So it's not like we're working on something that's only going to be applicable for this tiny part of the game generally speaking we want assets to be reusable that's going to save us time that's going to expand the game state in a healthy way that also makes it unique so it's a bit it's a bit of both you're seeing it largely in real time but there are still other things that we straight up aren't showing you that are being worked on in the background that when we're ready to talk about and ready to show we'll let you know 
And I said that was gonna be my last question to answer, but I'm gonna answer one more. <laughs> so many questions and I love it. Keep bringing them, keep bringing them, it's awesome. Speed runs of Everspace 2 yet? There aren't, but holy heck, people have Everspace 1 done in under 20 minutes. You can get Everspace 1 done in less than six minutes, a full blown run. Um, but that being said, um, Everspace 2 speed running, I feel like it's kind of weird to do speed running in an early access game where the main story and all the content isn't released yet. But um, I'm sure there will inevitably be them because we have a number of individuals in our community who are all about dat speed. All right, one more question, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the gameplay because it's probably not as exciting staring at a map screen. <laughs> Two more questions. How many ships do you think there will be? Oh, I don't have to tell you what I think. I can tell you what I know. There will be nine different classes of ships. Three in a light class, three in a medium class, and three in a heavy class. Each one of them will be very definitive in and of themselves that separate them from the other ships even within their same weight category. Beyond that, each one has a unique ultimate that they will be using, as well as an assortment of passives that they can acquire through the course of the game. So, if you find two of the exact same ship, two strikers, both of them could be very different depending on what passives and bonuses roll on that particular ship. In addition to that, then you also have your itemization, you have your pilot perks, you have blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of elements that come together to refine and shape that uh, to bring it into its whole. So there are nine ships that are not only planned, but will make it into the 1.0 release. Nine foundations, I think is the best way to put that. Um, and then last question, and then we'll get back in. <clears throat> uh, Retro Nutcase. I quite like the uh, I quite like the username. Chance that the player's headquarters might be able to be migrated from its current location to a ship you can call in a star system to have a sort of mobile HQ. I love that concept. We will talk so much more about the home base and the things surrounding the home base. <laughs> I want to tell you more. I can't. We're not ready to reveal that yet, but stay tuned. You might actually like what you'll hear in the future. That's what I'll say. Okay, I'm getting back into the game, but again, I do appreciate all of you fine folks out there who are helping direct questions, especially my boss, the CEO of Rockfish Games. How many freaking video game streams do you go into where the CEO is present? So major shout out to Michael. Uh, and answering, clarifying those details, also keeping me in check because, frankly speaking, there is a time and a place to talk about certain aspects of the game. It's needed. Because you get spoiled, then stuff's just not fun. Um, all right, so we're gonna go, let's see. We'll keep exploring, we'll keep exploring this location a little bit more. I like this location a lot, it's fun. And we'll also, uh, we'll also level up here in just a moment too. Just to talk about that a little bit, very briefly. Since I know you guys are curious. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nope. Back up, please. Back up, please. Get out of here. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Thank you for explaining what leveling up is. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Tooltips are wonderful, especially if you have no idea what the heck's going on in the game. I played this game once or twice. That's why I made the statement the way I did. <laughs> All right, Outlaw Bomber. There we go. Sensor, okay. All right, well, we could probably do with a new sensor. Sensor. Take out the rest of this base, get in close quarters. Nice. Wonderful. All right, so you can see there's there's various bases and uh, power spheres and secure containers. 
hidden away in these pockets uh, of the game, and there, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, actually, not in. That's on the other side. But there is also a lot going on in here. Like, when we go in this site, like, you can see there's some places to sneak around in. There's some stuff happening. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll dip into this one a little bit. We'll, sh we'll show you it. I'll show you just a little bit. Goes into the asteroid itself. So exploration is very much something we want you to capitalize on. Oh, hello there. And there are a number of opportunities that reward just that if you take the time to do so. More locations to go. I mean, this this tunnel it's i mean you saw the size of this asteroid there's a lot going on in here okay i don't want to go too deep because um i, mean, I don't want to like it's just kind of like what we were talking about earlier i just don't want to spoil everything for you i'm a professional um pilot okay just so you all are aware high levels a plus plus all right Somebody's asking, wait, you can have cockpit view? Um, yes, there's a cockpit view, yep. Where's my body? Oh my gosh, get a body in the game. This is ridiculous. Uh, siege rewarding, sorry. <clears throat> but um, we're actually planning on making bodies in the game. Um, it's just not a priority right now. We'll see if we get to it. We'll see if we get to it. So uh, we didn't do it in Everspace 1, it's just like, and all the things that we want to accomplish for the game, like, have I shown you the map screen? <laughs> all of these locations are handcrafted. Uh, we're working on a lot, and we wanna make sure that the stuff that we're adding into the game is meaningful, it's valuable, especially when it comes to that gameplay um, aspect. You know, the, the loops that you're going through, the loot that you're getting, and uh, having a body in the cockpit, it would be nice, and we recognize that. So we'll see. I'm cheating, what am I cheating about? I'm not cheating. It's designed in the game to go over level 16. If I were to click this button, I'd probably get in trouble though. So we're not gonna do that. Proceeds to yeet a wall. I am a, a, I'm a professional wall yeeter. There's actually a new device that's coming. Oh, I can't talk about it yet. Dang it! Watch the Zarkov trailer. <laughs> Skip to the end. Don't watch the, watch the whole thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, but that much much to this location in particular. I'm a big fan of this site. There's more to see and more to do. You just have to poke around. And then you get that beautiful view of Zarkov itself. Mm. So nice. We can even uh, zip on out of here and just be like, what? That is a very big sight. And that asteroid formation is not seen anywhere else in the game. Like, so you know that this is handcrafted. You haven't come across something like that in Union. I haven't, absolutely haven't seen it in Cedo. Cedo's lacking asteroids, let's be honest. Very, very large sites. I just keep zooming out here just to give you some sense of like how large these spaces are and what our team does to place all this stuff. Also, stay hydrated. Vineyard Master Mark II. You mean the grapple hook thing? Hey, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> mm. Pretty view, yeah. Yeah, and this is like on the 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 edge of the vortex. So there's not too much going on out here but there's like i mean it's still a very massive vortex all encompassing the system pretty large <clears throat> i 
Um, Arctic Avenger, a very serious question. Um, considering buying this game right now, uh, well, thank you for your consideration. Uh, I've been wondering how much content it uh, is, has, despite being an early access. If ours, if possible, which includes exploration, questing, fighting, etc. I believe a lot of members who have just been doing what the content offers and then that's it and then zipping out, you can get through the whole campaign in like, if you're like hightailing just the campaign alone, what it has to offer, about 12-ish, 15-ish hours. If you're soaking in like all of the sites, you're trying to collect all the things that are within the game space, I would say it's more, uh, it's even probably closer to 25 to 30 hours. Um, and that's also, just to give you some semblance of what that means, that's everything in Cedo and everything in Union. Zarkov is not available yet. This is the first look at Zarkov uh, and what it has to offer. Um, and then in addition to that, obviously, you see there's even more star systems out here because we have a little less than a year to continue developing the game. So right now, again, we're going to go, I'm going to say, I'm going to just like toss out 15 hours. All right. I think that's probably fair to say. 15 hours in the game right now with two systems. So that's where we're at. If you want to support us now, awesome. Goes a long way. If you want to wait, if you want to hold off and see if we actually hit all of our promises that we've made both through Kickstarter and through all of our announcements, that's totally fine. I am totally great in you guys waiting until that full release. If that's what you want to do, all for it. You wait until the full release and we will show you. We mean very serious business and bringing this thing to full life. That's totally fine. You do you. I'm also sure y'all have plenty of games in your catalog. And if this is just like, I have to play this now, your support's appreciated, 20% off right now, it's a good time to dive in, especially with an update and less than a month. Like, things are moving. So you're going to get a pretty decent chunk of time as it is, a nice hefty update next month. We'll have another update later this year, and then we will talk about even more updates at the beginning of next year. It's just updates after updates after updates, uh, about a three-month uh, cycle of, of information. Uh, it, 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 a three-month cycle of content getting added to the game. Uh, there you go. So hopefully that was more information than you needed, but I want to I be very transparent here. Like, that's our goal with these streams. You guys know that. Um, so yeah, just want to be real with you. That is what we are offering. Matt D says, I'm at 100 hours, you mad lad. <laughs> That's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah, are you one of the individuals going for like all of the everythings? <laughs> Itching my way to 300? Oh my goodness, you crazy people. You're, you're getting 300 hours out of two systems? Like... What the heck? The full game's gonna come out and you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm itching my way to 5,000. I'm gonna be at like maybe 500 as a main team player. <laughs> you guys are nuts. I mean, appreciate the support. Whew, but wow. Thank you for your feedback to make the game better. Really do appreciate that. Holy cow. I think uh, legitimately, let me check my hours right now. Let me just check my hours. Th this is... Okay, so so my hours reflect a lot of playtesting and ensuring that things are, are quality and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Game dev, play own game. Makes sense. Duh. I'm at 336.9 hours on Steam. That does not include when the game was not out on Steam, obviously. Um, there's also another uh, a number of other factors that that number doesn't actually truly reflect, uh, like versions of the game not on Steam, but I digress. So... Knowing that some of you guys are almost at that same amount of hours, uh, dang, that's cool. That's really impressive. That's really impressive. So uh, hopefully that provides a nice amount of context for all of you guys wondering what the scope is, what the scale is, uh, the overarching vision. Uh, we, we want to be very humble about it in marketing the 1.0 release to have about a 20 to 30 hour storyline, okay? So also know that. You know, so again, people are getting 12 to 15 hours out of two systems. Some people, three freaking hundred. Our main goal when the full 1.0 release is for the story alone to be about 20 to 30 hours of content. But obviously, you can go outside of that, do crazy missions, collect all the things. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Okay. That was a lot. I feel like it needed to be explained. I hope that has come across clear. 
You have your everythings, says Matt D, but I need more. Well, more is on the way. Mo so much more is on the way. Oh my gosh, so much more. I feel like every day there's a little bit more that I wasn't even expecting we were doing. It's like, wait a second. Is this supposed to be for the update? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Okay, really? My aim's a lot better in third person, I feel like. My goodness. Scout, another scout. Who's firing the missiles at me? Where are you at? Show yourself. Oh, it's a literally an outlaw turret. Okay. Ouch. Okay, much better. Here, let's let's play with our food. There you go. <laughs> Oops! Oh goodness! What are you? What happened? What happened over there? Oh, hold on, hold on. Hang on, I'm gonna help you out. Let's put you back to your base. Oops! A little too much there. Sorry. I'm trying to get to your hangar. It was just on the other side. Eh. My bad. Beautiful. What's in here? Whoop! Up! Ah, up! Oh. Woo! Be be a pilot. <laughs> Oof! Oh gosh! It's all right. This is what shields were designed for. Oh my gosh! Beautiful. Oh, now we're out of shields. Okay. A little more caution. Here, let's let's clear the way. Let's get these out of the way. That might help. Much better. Ah, beautiful. Wait, do we get turned around? <laughs> <laughs> we spun around. It's fine. There's lots of little nooks and crannies. That right? What a great demonstration. Ten out of ten. Oh my goodness. <laughs> nooks and crannies. They are important, though. You never know what you might find. Could be something really simple, like a little container full of wiring kits and a beam laser. Could be something real expansive. Uh, let's get rid of our stuff that we're let's just get rid of a lot of stuff let's do a bulk action um just to make a lot of space open real quick we can pull this wiring kit over uh also let's examine our sensor oh my gosh we have we have a prototype sensor oh wow that's really good so i like what we have we're not going to replace it so we'll go ahead and scrap both of these and get that superior crafting data right next to my head right here that's what that is superior crafting data then would allow us to craft Something at a super superior level. That's what this stuff is. Um, the blueprints. Oh my gosh, we can actually make a pulse laser blueprint using our crafting data. So we're going to unlock that. Beautiful. So what does that mean? That means that we can now craft a pulse laser itself like this. And we did add a couple of new features to when you craft. So you can actually compare now uh, with what's currently uh, equipped. And you can change that. Uh, change the weapon. You can change the weapon? Change the weapon. Yes, there you go. You can change the weapon for that quick comparison as well so that you can decide straight up if you want to equip this, uh, dismantle it, uh, etc. So before we even go back to our inventory screen, um, I actually want to replace the Prime Zapper. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, equip this in place of the Prime Zapper. Prime Zapper goes down here, right there. We have our new Pulse Laser. Let's see what it's like. Oh, yeah, it's pleasant. Pleasant. I like this. That's a nice weapon. I'll take it. Beautiful.
Robo Joe, I'm gonna read this out loud because I think this is very respectful. It says, I bought the game recently, but I think I'm going to wait until 1.0 to play. I've played and enjoyed early access games in the past, but burnt out before their full can content. Dude, I've been there too. Oh my gosh, I totally get it. If you want to hold off and be pleasantly surprised by the absurd amount of content that we're gonna be adding the to the game from now until full 1.0 release, totally respect it. I hear you there, man. I think that's a brilliant way to go about it. So thank you for your patronage. Your support goes a long way. And uh, I'm looking forward to surprising you and exciting you whenever we get to that full 1.0 release next year. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah, the new crafting screen, yeah. Um, we talked about it a couple of times in previous streams, but yeah, we, we wanted to make it a little bit more um, well conveyed pondering fox <laughs> so 10 out of 10 piloting good good thank you for the support this early access is awesome you basically get a new game every three months Woo! that's i mean that's one way to look at it i that's bold statement there's just a lot of content that comes every three months, um, and there's a lot more still coming. Um, so, yeah. If that's the way that you want to interpret it, and that's how it excites you, perfect. It's great. I dig it. There's definitely a lot of added layers. You know, it's, as a new ship enters the fray, that could entice an entirely new save file and entirely new perspectives of how you're going about missions. Um, new equipment shapes things up constantly i can't i don't think there's any other locations i can show here not yet we're still working on them we're gonna go back to the the gas orbit one more time i can't show you much in here okay guys i can't show you much i'm gonna fly in we're gonna have a look -sees. I'm gonna scoot out, okay? It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be a, a tantalizing tease. It's all we can do. When is Everspace 3 coming out? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Thanks for the mention. I'm very excited to play the game though. I do love space games. Oh, hang on a second. Hide this. I have a good old gander. Here, let's Let's just kind of like soak it in. This is a bad angle. Hang on a second. Let me let me fix this. Where the where the enemy <laughs> You're killing the moon! You're killing the moon enemies! Also, first person without the HUD is an option. I know that I've seen a number of people saying like that the uh, the cockpit itself, it's like, it's too bulky, I can't see very much. Um, okay. There's, there's this option as well. There's probably gonna, I'm just straight up telling you, there's probably gonna be a couple more accessibility options. In fact, I can confirm there will be more accessibility options for you to optimize your um, your vantage further in the future. As far as the cockpits themselves though, I wouldn't expect too much of crazy redesigns, but you never know. We haven't gone into full blown customization of the cockpit. So maybe you don't even know what they all look like yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right now, now let's gaze the clouds and I can't um, I can't stress to you guys how much attention to detail we're putting into structures like these these are not just to be like big old pretty gas sticks in the middle of this pocket of clear space okay there's stuff to do here 
There's stuff to do. We're just not ready to show you what that looks like just yet. And there's also more stuff in this area too. Maybe there's even more. <laughs> so yeah, just know that uh, we're having a lot of fun. We're pleasantly surprised and uh, want to make environments sexy. All right. Let's go ahead and bounce into Union for, well shoot, now we'll just, we'll float out here and we'll answer questions. Flood out here and we'll answer questions. Always first person plus HUD though. Um, so you can do that. Uh, so not in super light, I don't think. Does it? Does it actually add in super light? Hang on. Um, oh wait, that's gameplay. Sh show HUD in cockpit. I don't think it shows in super light. Oh no, it does. So yeah, basically uh, what's going on here is like you see Underneath me, you still see the UI there in the lower left corner and the upper left, upper right. It's all there, even though every single bit of that, except for the upper right information, is conveyed on the dashboard. So for me, I like going in here and turning that off because I'm literally seeing my pulse laser um, and I can swap the weapon. You can see it swapping, swap my missiles. I can see my devices, my consumables, my health. It's all there. All that's available in the cockpit display itself. And this is also how it operates for each individual ship. Too bulky. <laughs> oh, shout out to Wing Commander. Oh my gosh. Man, the flashbacks. Uh, point of reference again, one more time. This music right now that you're listening to, um, I just I want to make sure that you guys are aware. This is another hot track that Giho has been working on. You're getting bleeding edge development implementation during the course of these streams. <clears throat> this music is not locked in place for Zorkov. So you're effectively just getting to hear a bonus soundtrack right now, just for hanging out. Straight up bonus soundtrack. There's more to talk about, and you'll hear different music in the future. So enjoy while it lasts. Okay, now I'm gonna answer some questions. Will I be able to use resources to evolve my ship to the next tier rather than having to buy a whole new one each time? I love this question. We do have a lot of techniques and abilities that will be available to the game at a later point. In regards to the ship, uh, tiers. Right now, currently, we don't have any intentions to use crafting gear to enhance your ship to the next tier. Um, that it, crafting is very independent and specific towards itemization. That's a good question. Let's get let's get way too close to this star. Will you have a game journalist difficulty level? <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Brish, thank you for being in the stream and asking that question. We will have difficulties that are selectable so that if you feel like you're having a really freaking hard time with the game, you can scale it back. And it, we'll also have it to where if you're not getting as much as you desire, you can scale it up. The difficulty systems will not be ready by the um, the next update. We'll have more to share regarding that at a later point in time. Sign again. Oh my, I caught a stream. Much love from Hanover. Oh, that, excellent. I hope you guys aren't tired of all the freelancer references. Nah, it's fine. I mean, we love freelancer too. I'm sure it probably shows. <laughs> uh, but man, no game, but finally Everspace 2 uh, gives me those old school vibes again with new ideas. Yeah, I mean, we're certainly not trying to like remake freelancer. That's not the intent whatsoever. 
Our game is very different, but clearly we have taken inspiration from it. For sure, for sure. Glad that you're enjoying the experience. Glad that you are enjoying the experience. The IGN difficulty, oh my gosh. You guys. You know, there's somebody, there is a journalist in the chat right now who's watching. He's hearing me say what you're saying about game journalists. You guys, don't be so savage. Be nice. Not to all of them. <laughs> Some of them deserve to be savage. <laughs> but still, my point stands. <laughs> Once planetary collision is added, you'll just die. Yeah, yeah. Planetary collision is not a thing right now. It will be added. It's just not a priority. That's all. <laughs> Felt that the game was difficult as a new player, but after having played through the game and going back, it felt perfect, so I can understand how this is hard to balance. Yeah, and you know, uh, Matt D, I'm glad that you're sharing your observations there, especially for our broad audience watching right now, because this is not a game that is meant to be like, when you level up, you're just inherently stronger, so things are just easier. That's, that's not what we're going for. The game doesn't get easier just by you spending time in it. The game gets easier by you understanding the mechanics and getting skillfully better. A very skilled player at Everspace 2 should be able to navigate the hardest difficulty being underleveled pretty clearly because you're gonna understand what sort of weaponry and devices and chips complement one another in order to capitalize on those sweet gains. Translated, that means if somebody out there is whining, the re developer official response is get good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh goodness gravy <laughs> but i digress i digress guys thank you so much for joining me for the stream today we are wrapping things up right now hope that you're enjoying the new sick beats coming from giho that are placeholder these will be changed this music will be changed you guys have seriously been amazing um I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for all things Everspace 2 related, your servant, your guide. If you have any questions that I missed, uh, come find us in the Discord. Ask dev questions, get on the forums. Look up to see if other people have been answered pertaining to those questions, and we will make sure that you are well taken care of. Don't stop being awesome. We'll catch you next week, and maybe we'll have a little bit more to show. Maybe we'll even have access to pilot a new ship, maybe, Michael? Could we do that? I don't... I'm just, I'm, I should probably ask that off stream or I'm going to get in trouble. Anyway, toodles! reports that there has been a desire to reveal the fan art and rest assured we know we will be showing off new fan art next week and highlighting your incredible skill when it comes to screenshot taking tune in to see your hard work showcased live